Today, I'll be taking you for a tour of Rhubarb's house, which she so graciously allows me to live in as well. When you first enter, there's a closet for shoes, seasonal coats, cold weather accessories, and if you look up, you'll notice the primary resident of the house there to greet you. The house is two stories, but the basement is currently rented out, so we only live in the top floor. In the front entry, I have this mid-century modern dresser, which on top of it has a basket for our masks, a bowl for keys, this nice fiddle leaf fig plant, and a diffuser, which I like to use a mix of lavender and lemongrass essential oil to make sure the house smells nice when you first walk in. We also have several pieces of Joe Average artwork throughout the house, which add a nice pop of color and cheerfulness. Leaving the front entry, you'll make your way into the kitchen, which is one area of our house that is not overly minimalist. If it looks like we have a lot of food and cooking equipment, it's because we do. We cook almost exclusively at home and eat out maybe twice a month, usually from a sushi restaurant that we love that's just down the road. In the past, I've tried to take steps to minimize my kitchen more because I felt like I had to, but I ended up really missing the things I had removed and realized how much happiness cooking and having a well-stocked kitchen brings me. If you watched my 22 ways to simplify your life video, you might know that I keep all of my plates, cups, and bowls directly above the dishwasher to make it simple and easy to unload them. I like to use different food items and cooking utensils as decoration. They all get used really frequently, so I'm not worried about them collecting dust or getting in the way. On this shelf, I have my favorite Le Creuset pot, all of my cookbooks, and this little grocery list that I can use to keep track of things I'm out of or that I need to buy. In the back corner is where we store all of our tea and coffee equipment. Aside from Anthony's coffee bean grinder, I have my tea set, one for Gong Fu Cha, one for Matcha, and then a couple of teas that I use every day. I also keep a tray of common ingredients and utensils out on the counter because I use these every day. In the past, I've tried putting them away, but because I use them so often, it was just more convenient for me to keep them out. I like to keep most of my appliances in what I call my appliance garage, but there are a few that I keep on the counter. My kettle gets used probably six or seven times a day. The KitchenAid mixer is used maybe once or twice a week, but it's a little too big and heavy to store elsewhere. And then I also keep the toaster oven on the counter too. The kitchen is the only area of the house where I like to keep little knickknacks and decorations. On the windowsill, I have my jade plant, as well as some agate shells and painted rocks. And on the fridge, I have a painted whale that my sister-in-law made on a card, and I thought it was so pretty, so I cut it out and stuck it on the fridge. I've set up my kitchen to be as easy and convenient as possible, so I also hang my aprons up on this cupboard so I can quickly grab them before I start cooking. My kitchen is definitely the space in my house I feel the most comfortable in and also probably where I spend the most amount of time. It's full of everything that I need and use frequently and I'm not really interested in minimizing it further. No one can convince me to either. I'm not planning to get rid of any of my appliances, even the ice cream machine and especially not the pasta maker. Moving on from the kitchen, we have our dining room. And yes, you're seeing that correctly, we only have three dining room chairs. Both the table and chairs were quite cheap and purchased when we first moved in together and they definitely have not stood the test of time. One completely broke, so we are now left with three. We are planning to get a new table and chairs eventually, but most of the time we find ourselves eating at the coffee table anyways, so for now it's not too big of a deal. Next to the dining room, we have the living room, a cozy space with big windows that let in lots of light, a few plants, and plenty of seating for having over friends and family. On the coffee table, I have a tray with a vase of dried flowers, a candle and some matches, 
binoculars for watching birds out the window, TV remote, coasters, and rhubarb's laser pointer. I decided to put it in a tray as I thought it looked a little bit neater than having everything just piled on the table. The corner next to the window is definitely rhubarb's corner. I've tried a few times to get rid of this cardboard box, but every time I do, she gets really upset and starts meowing a lot, so instead I just put this fuzzy carpet over it to try and help it blend into the living room more. She also has a scratching box and a cat stand where we keep all of her toys. She's one spoiled kitty. Behind the couch is our fireplace, which unfortunately doesn't work, as well as a corner with a chair and a lamp that is the perfect spot for reading. Up on the ledge is a comfy cushion for rhubarb since that's where she likes to spend her time since so she can watch people coming and going in the house and sitting in the living room. This corner is also where I keep my yoga mats and equipment since that's the place in which I practice it. Moving down the hallway, we then have the bathroom. I try to keep the countertops as clear as possible with only the essentials, and I have a drawer where I store all of my skincare, makeup, and different hair accessories. I like to hang some dried eucalyptus leaves in the shower, and I also have these postcards that were gifted to me by a Vancouver artist named Liz Dewey Weiss, who specializes in paintings inspired by the wildfires we experience in British Columbia. Next up, we have the bedroom. I try to keep our bed fairly simple with just pillows, a duvet, weighted blanket, and of course, the cat. On my nightstand, I store a collection of books that I'm reading, because there never can be just one, as well as a small plant, some hand cream, and eye drops. On the side of a room is our laundry hamper, a fan, and a dresser which we both share. It's topped by another plant, as well as some artwork painted by my very talented sister-in-law. I've switched to a year-round capsule wardrobe, so you may notice that my closet looks a little more full in this video, but I'm planning to do another declutter soon. In between our closets is a full-length mirror, which Rhubarb also really enjoys. Outside the bedroom is a very simple laundry setup. On the top shelves, I keep my clothes steamer, iron, extra toilet paper, and towels. And on the bottom shelf, I have some vinegar, laundry detergent, cleaning supplies, as well as tools for maintaining your clothes, such as a lint roller and fabric shaver. Across from the laundry machine is a little cupboard that I use to keep our emergency kit. In here, we have extra food, water, clothing, and any other supplies that we would need in the event that there was an emergency or we needed to evacuate. I also keep a little tray with a phone charger and some headlamps in case there's a power outage. The last room in the house is the office, which we use for both work and hobby related activities. On the left is my desk where I work from home five days a week, and I also store all of my tripods for YouTube in the corner. There's a little window on the side where Rhubarb likes to come hang out with me while I'm working. On the right hand side is where I store my sewing machine, fabric, as well as a basket of yarn for different crochet projects. Behind me is a mess box full of different kitchen equipment for when we go camping, as well as a really cute little picnic box and blanket. Next to the door, I have a shelf with some plants, some of which are really struggling, and a photo above it, a collage that was made for me by a dear friend. Underneath are four shelves, one with my books, one with Anthony's books, one with some photo albums and filming equipment, and then a little box for rhubarb to sit in while I'm in the office.
and that is it for the home tour. Our home might not seem as minimalist as others that you see on YouTube, but it's important to remember it's not trying to be. To me, minimalism is a mindset of intentionality and purpose, and those are the attributes I have tried to apply while designing my home. My home isn't perfect. It has chips, dents, and cracks. I don't like the tile in the bathroom. There are things that we still need to finish, and there are certainly ways I could try and reduce visual clutter. But at the end of the day, I love my house, and I still feel it reflects my personality while providing a cozy, calm, and comfortable space where we can live our lives. There are plenty of good memories here. It was the first place I lived with my husband, where we got engaged, where we got rhubarb, and we've had plenty of dinners with family and friends that have filled the house with laughter and love. I think at the end of the day, no matter what they look like, that's what our homes really are to us. A space in which we can be completely ourselves and make memories of those we love. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving it a like and subscribing for more content about minimalism, slow living, and appreciating the little things in life. Rhubarb and I would like to thank you for watching and we'll see you again soon.